coming up on today's episode of Airborne Next Gen. Intuitive Machines lands NASA contract for lunar payload delivery. Coast Guard approves Regent for sea glider testing. And SpaceX Falcon 9 resumes flights during investigation. And I'm your host, Holland Lee. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Next Gen Program, a weekly news program covering the next generation of flight, from electric power to vertical lift, uncrewed vehicles, and everything in between. Let's get into today's stories. Intuitive Machines lands NASA contract for lunar payload delivery. NASA has awarded Intuitive Machines of Houston a $116.9 million contract to deliver six payloads to the moon's south pole. The cargo includes science experiments and technology demonstrations, and is slated to arrive on Earth's satellite in 2027. The contract represents the space agency's 10th and latest Commercial Lunar Payload Services Initiative Award, and is part of its broader Artemis campaign. The CLPS is intended to conduct scientific research on the Moon, and this will be the fourth delivery to the Lunar South Pole region. Joel Kears, NASA's Deputy Associate Administrator for Exploration, Science Mission Directorate in Washington, D.C., said, quote, by supporting a robust cadence of CLPS flights to a variety of locations on the lunar surface, including two flights currently planned by companies for later this year, NASA will explore more of the moon than ever before, end quote. This contract includes Intuitive Machines' responsibility for payload integration, launch from Earth, safe landing on the lunar surface, and mission operations. Chris Colbert, manager of the CLPS initiative at NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston, said, quote, the instruments on this newly awarded flight will help us achieve multiple scientific objectives and strengthen our understanding of the moon's environment, end quote. After the break, Flight Sim Association releases details for Expo. Are you ready to ace your FAA drone pilot knowledge test, get your remote pilot certificate, and start earning money? Well, flying a drone is a great tool that can open up new business opportunities for anyone. Realtor, insurance adjuster, videographer, or commercial weekend drone warrior, you need to fly legally. Whether you're pursuing your initial Part 107 remote pilot certificate, or you need a renewal, King Schools has a course just for you. So start learning today at kingschools.com. For over 30 years, the Massive Sport Plane Resource Guide has provided expert, credible information, evaluations, and critical analysis of all that the sport aviation world has to offer. The all-new Digital Sport Plane Resource Guide is coming with extensive multimedia features that are constantly updated, and even more comprehensive online guide to all things sport aviation. Available soon, www.sportplane.com. Welcome back. Now for some shorter stories in our Next Gen Minute. Flight Sim Association releases details for Expo. The Flight Simulation Association just published new details for their 2025 Flight Sim Expo. Attendee registration opens in mid-December. Flight Sim Expo 2025 will be taking place from June 27th to 29th at the Rhode Island Convention Center in Providence. This is one of the largest simulator-focused events, having welcomed over 7,500 guests in the last six years. Their 2024 event, hosted in Las Vegas, had more than 2,400 attendees stop by. Lunar Dawn Science Council guides Lunar Rover Science. Lunar Outpost announced the establishment of the Lunar Dawn Science Council and named the Arizona State University School of Earth and Space Exploration as the lead research group. Lunar Outpost leads the Lunar Dawn team, which was awarded a Lunar Terrain Vehicle Services contract by NASA in April 2024 to enable unprecedented exploration of the moon's surface by NASA Artemis astronauts. The Science Council will provide input and guidance from lunar scientists to maximize the quality and scientific return. 
First Eagle Eye Radar Rolls Off the Line The first of many Eagle Eye Radars has rolled off the General Atomics Aeronautical Systems production line. The Eagle Eye was built by GAASI. This company is a subsidiary of General Atomics, an RPA radar and electro-optic system manufacturer. Their new radar system is intended to capture high-res imagery through clouds, rain, dust, smoke, and fog. It will be a drop-in enhancement for the current U.S. Army's Gray Eagle Extended Range UAS. True Simulation Equips Tunisian Air Force with New Gear True Simulation and Training recently announced their delivery of a Beechcraft T-6 Texan II operational flight trainer and computer-based training lab to the Tunisian Air Force. The device aims to accelerate training at the SPAC's Air Force Base following their acquisition of eight Texan II aircraft last year. True Simulation and Training is a manufacturer of training devices and full-motion flight sims. They are an affiliate of Textron Aviation Defense. That was our Next Gen Minute. Now back to the rest of the news. Coast Guard approves Regent for sea glider testing. Regent Craft has announced the Coast Guard has approved its navigation safety risk assessment. The approval means the Rhode Island-based company is now authorized to begin testing its full-scale prototype. Regent consulted with over 20 local stakeholders, including the Rhode Island Department of Environmental Management, Marine Pilots, Harbor Masters, the U.S. Navy, the FAA, sailing organizations, and environmental groups to address their concerns. It also included a third-party risk analysis of navigational safety, review of environmental concerns, and economic impacts from testing. The Coast Guard reviewed the assessment at the sector, division, and national levels and approved it with no revisions. This process for assessment and approval will serve as a template for future commercial sea glider approvals in other U.S. waterways and around the world. Sea gliders are all-electric hydrofoiling wing and ground craft that operate over water and ground effect within one wingspan of the surface. U.S. law defines such craft as maritime vessels regulated by the U.S. Coast Guard with technical support from the FAA. Regent is working with the Coast Guard to further certification of its Viceroy Sea Glider, a 12-passenger vehicle able to attain speeds of up to 180 miles per hour and service routes up to 180 miles on a single charge. After these messages, SpaceX Falcon 9 resumes flights during investigation. The legendary BD 4 c program is building an exciting future for those who want a rugged four-seat family flyer with a proven history. The Surewings program produces a complete kit and builder assist program that gives you everything you need to be flying a BD-4CS in record time. For conventional kit builders, BD Aviation has parts, partial kits, and full kits for the 190 mile per hour BD-4C that has logged thousands of hours. Visit Surewings.com and BDAviation.com for more details. I'm currently using the Hartzell Talon, by far the best aerobatic propeller ever come out. I use the Trailblazer. It adds performance to the Super Decathlon and dependability, and it's rugged. Hartzell's been an excellent partner for Whip Air, just in terms of your product support, as well as keeping an eye on the market and developing new products that meet demand. It's helping us all have better performing airplanes. It's such a proud honor to fly behind that propeller. Welcome back. SpaceX Falcon 9 resumes flights during investigation. The FAA has given SpaceX the go-ahead to resume Falcon 9 flight operations. The aircraft remains under investigation after a recent landing slip-up. On August 29th, the SpaceX Falcon 9 had a failed landing after successfully deploying 21 Starlink satellites into orbit. The agency reported that one of its landing legs had collapsed, causing its first-stage booster rocket to topple over. The FAA opened an investigation and grounded the spacecraft. SpaceX submitted a request to return flights a day later. This was approved on August 30th. The FAA clarified, quote, The SpaceX Falcon 9 vehicle may return to flight operations while the overall investigation of the anomaly during the Starlink Group 86 mission remains open, provided all other license requirements are met, end quote. 
SpaceX wasted no time after the FAA's decision was released. They made back-to-back -back launches in two states, delivering 42 more Starlink satellites into orbit. Later this month, the Falcon 9 is scheduled to take two NASA astronauts to the ISS on board a Crew Dragon. They are expected to return early next year carrying two hitchhikers from the failed Boeing Starliner mission. The problematic booster had been a record breaker, completing 23 liftoffs with the Falcon 9. This is one more than any other SpaceX booster. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.